Yeah, good evening, everyone. This is me, your brother, your friend, your man is Steven. This is Mata arising with Imani Steven. Tonight, we are having our brother again, uh, historian on the show. Today's going to be Bini, you know, historian lessons, uh, and uh, we're going to have our brother going to take us through the the story of uh, Kaladera to the, to the position of Oromia. Now, please, let's welcome our brother into the show right now. Good evening, my brother. What's your name, How you doing, Baba? You're all right, Tom. What's it? What's it? Back here. When I when I mag here, no man there would. Hey, the other no, Baba. I can I can see that. You know, because people are really people really want to uh, get used to the story and our history, and I think. Uh, uh, if we can, I'm going to plead with that. You can give us your covenant time. If I can change all other, all other interviews that I have and debate, I can put you, you know, on that day and at that time, not changeable. Okay, so we can we can do all we can do to see that we we begin to teach our children, packages of us who are abroad, our children love, you know, to to uh, to listen to our history today. Yesterday, a, a child called me and said, Asa, when is uh, that uncle coming back? I said, yes, yeah, the uncle is coming, back. He's coming back today. And I'm very sure the boy is right there with me now on the show, sitting beside the daddy, wanting to listen to our stories. Because, you know, most of the day, they teach, they teach them the story in schools. But they teach them the very wrong, the wrong part of our, our mm -hmm. history. Yeah, yeah, they give them the wrong part. So we who, you, you guys who are, still, who are historians, who have the, the full knowledge of the Edo history, I think it will be better you give us that uh, privilege whereby we can be able to learn and have this thing documented in uh, in tapes, just like we are doing, so that we can have them be played over and over again to our kids and also to to the people that actually, you know, uh, uh, love to see or hear. Uh, last time, we, we decided to start from the beginning. And I said, okay, you should just take us through the the Paidu down to the entire Ogisos. They were not ended at the last Ogiso of uh, of the 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 Godomigodo, which is the first dynasty of the kingship of the of the Benin Kingdom. Now I want us to start from there right now. Now let us now proceed, and I want us to know what actually led because we have a lot of controversy. Like on that day, like this very particular body called him. Uh, I don't like mentioning his name on my show. Okay, because it's so I don't want to give any popularity on my show. You know the guy I'm talking about, who is uh, who is twisting the entire Benin story. He lives in uh, in in uh, in Germany. You know, he was he was on this show the last time you were here, and uh, he was he was commenting yeah. something was completely different from what uh, we all know from history time. So that's okay. Let us go through the Kaladera story down to Oromia, and if possible, we can you know. You know, had the dots in between to actually know what uh, what happened. So the floor is yours right now as you take us through this uh, history class. Thank you. Well, uh, my brother, I have to first and foremost appreciate you for having a platform for us, for some of us to come and um, give the right perspective of our history. Like I said in the first um, section that I had with you was that um, um, it is quite a crack stupidity if a do people are listening to that ignorant guy in Germany because uh, of all the professors of a do extra. Of all the doctors of African history, Benin history, world history, across the past hundred of years, why is it that one miscrant, hungry, shrinking poverty mentality, young man who is in faraway land, who doesn't even know his left to the right, is not the one to tell us our own history 
of the numerous academicians, scholars, gurus of history, both old Benin history and modern Benin history, as well as the Benin interactions with the Europeans dating from the 14th to about 19th centuries. So any right thinking a dope person would not listen to someone whose background is even shredded in miseries and whose ignorance is it's bigger <laughs> than the definition of ignorance itself so how about said that uh, anyway the moment i go on any live video any live video you are sure of having these people who are threatening our history to always flawed. In short, <laughs> they look forward to trying to convince people. So uh, don't be surprised in the next few minutes you see them crawling into these live videos because uh, wherever is otherwise, they always crawl along with it. Anyway, having said that, um, we have authoritatively through press conferences, through uh, uh, historical books, through articles, through journals, been able to disprove the fallacies of Oromi and being a Yoruba person. Um, and uh, I want to take us through this very all important history that I think a lot of our Edo people should be aware of. Who is a Kaladeran? Who is Oduduwa? Who is Oromea? These are three basic questions that every Edo person should know. Who is a Kaladeran? Who is Oduduwa? Who is Oromea? A Kaladeran is Oduduwa. A Kaladeran is, is Oduduwa. Kaladera or Odudua is the father of Oromia. It's not a complex, it's not a complex thing. Now, to give a secular sort of understanding of it, every Benin man or most Benin women or men usually have more than one name. Usually have more than one name. The name probably given to you by your father or your paternal grandfather or grandmother. Then the name given to you by your mother or your maternal grandmother and grandfather. Like for, for example, my father gave me Marvis, which are shown in almost all my document throughout my primary to university level. Now, but I also have another name that people in modern times now come to identify and know me as, and this is Zodua. Now, is Zodua Mavis? They are the same person. Mm -hmm. They are the same person. So there are no complications about how Benin people or do people give names to their children. Ikaladiran was the name that was given even to the only son of Ogiso Owodo. But he had another name that was maternally also given, which was Izoduwa. Izoduwa. So, paternally, he was called the Kaladeran. That was the name his father gave to him. Izodua was the name his mother gave to him. The same person, Izodua, Ikaladera, the same person. There were complications. I want to go through it because of it's a very popular story. I usually don't go through all that, but I want to go through. Ogiso Owodu had just one son. His name was Ikaladera. Ikaladera for whatever reasons, Ogiso Owodo could not give birth to other sons. 
So uh, inherently, Kaladera became the heir apparent to the throne of his father, Yogi. So throne. All right. But there were people who felt that. Coming from the background of a Kaladaran's mother, a Kaladaran mother was not even amongst the top-ranking queens of Ogiso Owodas, Owodos Harem. All right, wives harem. It was not even part of the top queen. So how could someone who was not even, who is likened to be almost a concubine, be the person who is to produce the next king? Of the numerous wives of Ogiso Owodo. So there was a grand conspiracy by the first wife of Ogiso Owodo. Her name is lost in time, but however, historians call her Esawo. Esawo is usually a title in the old times of her history during the Ogiso time, given to a troublesome, hard headed wife of the king in this case of the ogisho so this woman was the first wife and she was also called esago esago conspired from because and i have fear all right ogisho Wodo, because of the so much pressure he had that how can you be realized that you only have one son what if that one son dies that means the throne that was supposed to continue with your skin will be given to your younger brother or your the nest of kin to you. So you must do something as a man. You must have alternative. You must bear other sons. So now when I have fear your, I give fear your. You understand? A divination was was sorted out for. The divination had said that the first wife of the Ogiso was the problem why the Ogiso Wodo had not given birth to other children, other male, main, main children. He had several female children, obviously. So eventually, uh, Esau got to be aware of that oracular divination and he obtained it by getting naked to the chiefs that went to that went to that went to investigate the oracular divination of her being the problem that uh, that has affected Ogiso Wodo for giving birth um, to other sons. Obviously, she changed it, all right, and eventually she now said she had conspired because of a Minavi chief Imi Agatala, and they will be sentenced to death. All right, she 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 uh, opened nakedly to them. By the, the laws of the land, whoever sees the nakedness of the Oba or the Ogiso of Igudumigod or Bini or Edo, as it was called at that time, will be subject to death. So instead, they have seen her nakedness. Now they were under her influence, and she told them that if you don't want me to tell the Ogiso that you saw my nakedness tell mm. him that his only son is the mm. the oracular definition as 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 um sort of um omu, i'm trying to use a good word omu. <laughs> mm. i'm trying to use a good english word omu, that instead the caladoran should be killed so that mm. would be so old uh -huh. sigh all the sons that report was given. Ogiso Wodo was a very weak king to have conceded rise and considered that his only son to be killed. Now, a lot of persons are saying that who's those liars, perpetrators of liars, saying that why would why would Ogiso Wodo, whose father will allow his only son to be killed. Can we not go to Bible for those, for those of us who are Christians? Did Abraham accept to sacrifice his only son, Isaac? Yes, he did. 
So there are references of other histories of the world where the father had to concede to sacrifice his only son. So why would, if it had happened in other histories of the world, what is the possibility that it will not happen in Benin history? It rarely happened. We saw Wodo was weak as a king. So he conceded for his son to be sacrificed. The day the Kaladiran left Benin to be butchered and killed, all right? Ederio, Ede, na memaro novema nyu, Ederio dot Edi Kaladiran. Oh, he just went off the show. I think he's going to come back. Now. I think that is that is network network problem. Is really getting interesting. Please, guys, there's no need of uh, insulting anyone here. Uh, Sade Bame, please, if you want to insult someone here, I'm going to take you off my show because this is where you listen. If you have anything you want to ask, drop it there. We will put it off for him to answer. So not coming in and throwing insult on anyone on the show. Okay, if you don't believe in history, we do believe in this. We want to see the truth. If you have another another aspect of the history, bring it up. I can put it on the show. I can put you on the show to come and tell us what you actually believe in. I can do that. Okay, guys. If you have any issue, any any other belief from the original one that that we are talking about, just put it up, and uh, we'll, I will invite you to the show for you to give us your own definition or your own understanding of history of Benin rather than to insult on people. Continue, sir. Go ahead, sir. Okay, okay. Uh, like I was saying, um, it is recorded till date, the day there is no sun and there is no, there is no rain. At Derry of a dome, at a dick because it was recorded that the day a Kaladiran left Benin, the song cried. All the celestial beings cried. Now, that particularly is true. Do you know why? Because a Kaladiran left with the blessings of Edo land. I want to establish that blessing in Yoruba land. So the, the blessings that the Yoruba people command today is from Edo land. The Kaladaran left with the blessings of the throne. So, obviously, when a Kaladaran left, they got to a place where they were supposed to kill him. But they knew that it was a grand conspiracy. They knew that it was a grand conspiracy against that innocent young man. He are not fine. Instead, they allowed him to run, but with a promise never to return to Benin. So he took, he had that promise. Instead, they killed a chicken. They killed a chicken to stain the umozo. That was a class they had at the time, the sword they had, they didn't call it umozo. That place became a community we now know today as Uruwa Hoho. Ohoho Nagbe, Nayafin, Kaladera. Nagbe, Yevo, no Kevare, the community that sprang up from today. It's called Uruwa Hoho. Uruwa Hoho is still very much in existence. So these stories that we tell, go to these communities, they are going to tell you that this is exactly how it happened. This is exactly the spot that the Kaladaran was supposed to be killed. Instead, a chicken or a fowl or however it was, was, was killed and the blood was used to stain the sword that was presented to the king that he has been duly sacrificed as falsely reported as the oracular divination. Eventually, the Kaladaran left all through those thick and thin and got to a place that will now call Uwotong. Go to a place that will now call Uwotong. He established 
that community called Uwoto. Uh, there was a there was a picture that uh, went viral one time, sometime early this year. I placed the uh, a Gui Kaladeran, the Kaladeran statue at Uwoto, or Hohono Dai, and all that. Some of the some of this ritual and physical representation that it was actually Kaladera that established the Uwoto community till date. So eventually they had gave the reports back to his father that they had duly sacrificed them. So but eventually they after some time Ogiso had other children and they were all females and it was like after I had sacrificed my only son, why am I still giving birth to female children? And they went for a second oracular divination. That is when it was not revealed that it wasn't in Kaladeran that was asked to be sacrificed, but Esau. That was had to be sacrificed, but it was Esau. That's when his father knew it was a mistake. All right? So instead, he killed Esau. He became blood testy as a king. Eventually, at one point in time, he was he was he was um, he was banished. Ogiso Wodo was banished at the later tale. But all entreaties to retrieve the Kaladeran became null and void. Instead, he traveled through the Okada. There is still a physical presence of how he got to Okada, and he went to Irua. Eroa, Eroa community is very prominent. It's one of the communities that was established. Eroa is at Umode, was established by a Kaladera. That community exists today. So there is every single place that a Kaladera go to, there is a school. There is in Kaladera primary, primary school at Okada because he actually got to Okada. There is a Kaladera secondary school at Eroa because he was at Eroa. Eventually, before he got it, got himself far enough from this land and got himself to a place that it is now called Ilife. When he got there, there was already an Ifa definition that Omiyama found. Someone who is to give salvation to the Ife people is coming. You must understand this. The Ife people were being raided by neighboring communities because Ife as a seat had no leadership prior before Ikaladera got to Ilife. It is not that Yorubas are trying to not give modern day uh, revisionism to their history. Ikaladera or Dudua is the first recognized ruler of the Ife people. And when did he go to Ife? Just slightly above 1,000 years ago. Slightly above 1,000 years ago. So when he got, when, when they saw, when they saw this foreigner, because there was already an oracular definition that portrays that someone is coming to give them that astute leadership to, to enable then defeat those invading neighbors. That is when they get to see someone that has a kind of an attribute that was already predicted by the Ifa priests, that someone that is foreign is coming to them to save them from the neighboring invaders. So Ikaladera was quickly identified and when he was asked what was his name, don't forget, he felt betrayed by his father. Everything that has to concern his father, he wanted to wipe it off. Instead, he took his maternal inclination because he felt that the mother was not alive to have witnessed the betrayal that his people had betrayed him. So instead, instead of telling them that he's a Kaladera, he gave them his maternal name, Izodua. And because Izodua, it's a foreign name to the Yoruba people, 
now presently called the Yoruba people, let, let's be more precise, to the Ilefe people, they had mispronounced it as Oduduwa. Now, the first question that has not been answered by the Yoruba people till date is this. What does Oduduwa mean in Yoruba? They do not have a single answer. Instead, they'll try and bring so many other words, or do whatever, or do do whatever, <laughs> but they don't have a meaning, or do do because it is foreign to them. Very foreign. In Benin, you have a lot of Izodua, uh, Imagi Dudua, Uwaraye, uh, Uwayeme. There are so many who are, but you don't have that in Yoruba land. How come the progenitor of the Yoruba race tends to have a name that is almost similar to Bini names? And that name that they called him, their own progenitor, that they gave their own progenitor, they tend not to have a meaning for it till date. Instead, they'll try and break it and expand it and say it is a conglomerated world and all that but tell them to give you affirmatively what to do the one means they don't have any explanation that means first that Oduduwa was not a yoruba person first secondly the yoruba historians agree that Oduduwa was a foreigner because Oduduwa came to meet the aboriginals he came to meet people when you come to meet people in a place that means you are foreign to them. So Oduduwa was a foreigner. Agreed, go and read the Yoruba books. They all agree that that man was a foreigner. He came to meet people. You understand? Yeah. They, he came to meet people in that land. So he's a foreigner. So them saying that Oduduwa is a progenitor of the Yoruba race is completely badadash. Because cannot be a progenitor of a race when, when you, you admit people. You cannot, you cannot be, a, a son cannot be, a son cannot give birth to a father now. You understand? Yeah. If I, if I come to, if I come to meet you in your own land, I cannot be your own father now. <laughs> so, yeah. There are so many lies that the Yorubas have been telling that I think they should reconcile because they are too proud. They are too proud to tell them, to tell their children where they are, they are so called, in quotes, their so called progenitor came from. So, some of their earlier historians now said that Oduduwa came from the east of Ife. <laughs> the likes of their professor Obayemi said that Oduduwa came from the east of Ilefe. When they now discovered that Benin is in the east of Ilefe, hmm? They now quickly add far east. Do you understand? Yeah. Initially, because they were not too conversant with the geography of Nigeria, the earliest Yoruba historian wrote that Duduwa came from east of Ilefe. So, but when later on they now discovered that Benin is actually east of Ilefe, they now quickly added far east. That's Mecca. That's when the whole lie of Mekana came. All right? So when the lie yeah. of Mekana came, then I started to say that Oduduwa had a father called Lamorudu or Lamorudu, who was a prince from Mecca, Saudi Arabia. But the truth is, the Saudi Arabians are Muslims. They don't practice tradition. They are Muslim. So how could Oduduwa have a Muslim background and be called a core traditionalist on getting to Ilefe? And there is no trace of Islam, Islamic religion, in Ilefe brought by Oduduwa. So that lie that Oduduwa came from Mecca, Saudi Arabia, and some historians went to trace his roots to Saudi Arabia, and they didn't see the guy. So instead, there is another origin where Oduduwa came from. 
The another origin is that is the one believed by the Koi Ilefe people that Oduduwa fell from the sky. I want to use this medium to tell everybody that that history is so correct that Oduduwa fell from the sky. How is it correct? It is the report that our son, Ikaladiran, which they now called Oduduwa, gave to them that made them feel that he fell from the sky. Don't forget, Ikaladiran's father, now called Oduduwa, his father was Ogiso Owodo. And in my, in my last class, I had made mention of what Ogiso means, king from the sky. Yeah. So inherently, the Ileife people, because they knew he was a foreigner, they had to ask him, who is your father? And he told them, my father is Ogiso, and Ogiso means king from the sky. So the Ileife said, okay, if your father came from the sky, you are from the sky. So that is why the reality of the history of the Ileife people at accentuates that Oduduwa fell from the sky. It was the report that the Kaladiran gave to them that his father being Ogiso, king from the sky, that made them postulate that he actually fell from the sky. Because <laughs> if your father came from the sky, then you're also from the sky. So I believe that, that Odudu actually came from the sky because it was a report that our son gave to them. So eventually, let's not link it. We have been able to establish who Ikaladeran is and who Odudu is. Then let's not talk about who Oromia is. That is a bit the controversy. Yeah. First, the Yoruba people want to talk much more about Oromia. That's what they want. When you want to talk about the Ileife, <laughs> the Ileife and the Benin controversy, that is what they want to tell you. They want to, they want to make you feel that Oromia is the most important factor in that argument. But if you are a Benima, let me give you a trick today. You do not talk about the history of his son and forget the history of his father. Yeah. The Yoruba tried to tell you the history of Oromia as a connection between the Benin and the Ife people. The connection between the Benin and the Ife people is not Oromia. The connection between the Benin and the Ife people is Oduduwa. Oduduwa. It's not Oromia. Because why do they talk about Oromia? Because Oromia came from Ife to Benin. That is why they want to talk about Oromia. But they will not tell you why would Benin? Is it okay? Is that yeah, the network yeah. is bad? No, it's okay. Okay. It's okay. Now, yeah. why, why would you want to talk about his son and not talk about his father? Yes. Let them keep talking about Oromi and let us keep talking about Oduduwa. Because we know that Oduduwa is the connection. How is Oduduwa the connection? Ogiso Wado was eventually banished and he died in a place that he was banished to. The Benin was left without a king for 70 years. 70, 70. We we're left without a king for a period of 70 years. Within that 70 years, there was a series of events that took place in our land. The first event was there was a, a, a carnivorous which some, some, some bookers believe it was dragon, <laughs> which the Beninese called Oso, Oso, Osogan, who was Oso. coming to a place, uh, Ekyogiso, Ekyogiso, you understand? He was coming to Ekyogiso to, keep, to, to, to devour market women. So at one point in time, became, it became a legend in Benin, folklore or history, not folklore now because it's true, that Ekinagbadu Aegbari Agbadwe Aegbari So okay, later that, on that is where you get Agbadu market. Everyone is aware of Agbadu market in yeah, present day yeah, 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 yeah. 
the original name of that market was Ekyo Giso, but there was a mustard. The, that's how it came. The original name for that market, that's the first, that's the first market in Benin Kingdom. And that's the first market. It was built during the era of Ogisoe. That's when that market was built. Now, Edunaya uh, have a Kinagbado Agbari. So eventually, they now coined another name, Agbado, Agbado, Agbari, Agbado Market. But the real, the former name was Ogiso Market, a Kyogi. Yes. So that's how that name came, Agbado, from that monster that was killing. So there was a man that was brave. We have to, we have to remember him. He was a brave man. He was from Enyanugi. For some of us who have, if you're very conversant with Benin, there's a place called Enyanugi around the Bobai, close to Bobai MMA, towards the Bobai Enyanugi quarter. They were blacksmiths. They were blacksmiths. Uh -huh. So they were blacksmiths. All right. So he was a blacksmith. His name was Avian. He was a man who was bold enough to be able to to challenge the Osoga, all right, and defeated Osoga. So Osoga eventually, whether he died, the, that animal died or not, but from that wrestle that he had with Osoga, that monster never returned. So the Benin people now said, the chiefs now said that we have not had king for some years. Now, we now have someone who, who is not popular, who is brave, who is worthy, who is hardworking, who meets every requisite to even be a king. But however, let, him, let, let us make him a, an edai, an administrator. Uh, you understand? Mm. Let us make him a sort, a sort of someone who holds forth the title for the real owners at a die, and it was made an a die. All right, it was yeah. made an a die. Okay, that man's name was Avian. He was not listen. He was not made a king. He was made an a die. All right. Now okay. he had fought. He had fought that privilege for a long time until he was getting old. At, at his old age, he wanted his son to succeed him. Not his first son, his second son to succeed him. Because his second son was more forceful like he was. His first son was called Olia, as a matter of fact. Why his second son was Irebo? You understand? He wanted the second son to take over from him. Then the Benin chiefs now reminded him that you are not a king. You are made an administrator over the people. So it is not in your place to decide who takes over from you as an administrator. Because in the first place, you are just a mere administrator. So he they contested and said, the man contested and said that his second son must be the next person to take over the administration from him. And the, and the chief now said that for there to be conflicts, we are aware that the real owner of the throne still lies somewhere far west. We are going forth to look for him, to come back to sit on the throne of his fathers so that there should not be any civil war amongst us. Chief Olia Awoma, that was the name of that Olia of that era. Spelled A R O U O M O A, Chief Awoma, the Olia of that time, led a delegation of four of these chiefs and some cultures to look for the Kaladera. When they eventually got to Ilefe, they met a Kaladera. The Kaladera was already the king of the Ilefe people. He was already being recognized as a Duduwa. Okay? 
So, they are pleaded with him. They are pleaded with him to come back and sit on the throne of his fathers. He disagreed. He declined because for obvious reasons. He could he had had an oath never to return to Benin. One. Secondly, he was already very old. Thirdly, he did not trust his Oh, the network is here again. Now we are getting to, to the most interesting part, the network, you know, how to come back again and uh, obstruct this very important lesson class. Guys, any question you have, please drop it on the comment section. No insult, no name calling. This is just history that we all need to know about our people. Okay? Whether you believe it or not, we must get to know our history. We must get to know our history. Because one thing in life is when you lose your history, you lose your identity as a, as a people, as a nation. Okay? No matter, who, no matter what we think as, as a dose, as the Benin speaking people, no matter what we think, no matter what we believe in today, if you lose your history, you lose your identity. Okay? So that's why it's very important you have to come in, hear the story, hear how it was, it was being put together, and understand where we are coming from. They can throw in your questions and answers. Uh, Remy the Berkulosin or whatever, Please, this year, why is about here buried in life? Eh? He's just giving you stories. It's better you wait and get to that point. You cannot throw your question. Okay, sir. Just relax. He's going there. That's where we are coming. He's going. It's not. It's not going to run here. So let's wait and hear him out. Okay, guys. I know the network is really, really uh, messing up today. Can you hear me? Hello. Can you hear me? Oh, network is bad again. I think you need to log out and log back in. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I think it's, it's I think it's getting better now. Can you hear me? Hello, can you hear me now? <laughs> okay. Please guys, we, we just need to relax. But this is one thing I want to do bring you know everything to the table that is why like i said my show is completely going to be completely different from every other show you know on the social media space i'm not a social media influencer i am a presenter so i'm taking my show to another level where issues bordering on people are being put together and be you know explained to the best of our knowledge yeah can you hear me now yeah okay Can I proceed? Yeah, go ahead, sir. Okay. 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 Um, sorry, if I'm not sitting well, I'm trying to, you know, Nigeria network. I have to. Yeah. <laughs> the session for network all about the entire apartment. <laughs> anyway, anyway, sorry about the network uh, each, whatever. So like, like I was saying, um, like I was saying, <laughs> where was I before the network came? <laughs> Now you said they, they, they yeah. went they went to to uh, Ilefe and they met a uh, calendar and now do the and they refused to come back based on certain reasons age and others. Yes, yeah. Okay. 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 Beautiful. <laughs> yeah, do you know why I'm smiling? <laughs> I have a lot of Yoruba <laughs> professors. <laughs> they always um, they always come to my uh, to my inbox whether Facebook and then um, WhatsApp all the time, all the time. I, I get that every day. <laughs> that Yoruba matter will kill you something. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> old men, old men, professors, professors of Yoruba histories and all that. And I tell them that, um, I tell them, because some of them might, after this program, <laughs> they're already following your program because one of them actually make a reference to this program for the last one I did. Um, I tell them, and I want to. I want to reinterrect it before I continue. I like reinterrecting. I'm not dying anytime soon. <laughs> I'm not dying anytime soon. And I've sworn to God Almighty and our ancestors, the do ancestors, 
that gone are the days of uh, the Benin people that kept quiet for over a hundred years and allowed the Yorubas lie and went spot free. My generations, see, I've I've uh, I've inspired so much Edo people on social media now that social media is going bizarre, and we are pushing them back. A lot of Benin people are now social media talking about history. They have been inspired with my works. And I tell them that before I eventually leave this, <laughs> this land, I would have inspired so much Edo people to push back their lives. And we will, be, we will not be scared of it. We might even, if I have an audience with the old New York Fair, all these things I'm saying, I will tell him to, to his face that he should come and don't ballet to his, to his father, Albert of Benin. <laughs> anyway. Sorry, I just wanted to cheat. I like threatening them because <laughs> I haven't said that. They go to Ilefe. <laughs> they go to Ilefe. Try to entice um, the Kaladera and Kuna became Ududua, according to the Yoruba people, to come back to Ilefe. He gave the reason, which I already listed. He had an oath never to return. It was already old. And what was the third one? I think I'm forgetting the third one. I gave three reasons. Now, and I said, however, it opines on him as the heir apparent to that throne to ensure that the lineage of his father continues. So he gave them. Look at another controversy in, in Yoruba history. Yeah. This, there's another controversy in Yoruba history. So when I usually say this, some people say that I'm not aware of Yoruba history. I'm aware. There are two schools of thought in Yoruba history. One says that Oromia is the direct son of Oduduwa. Mm -hmm. Then another Yoruba history says that Oromia is the grandson of Oduduwa. Okay, that Oromia only had, uh, sorry, Oduduwa only had one son called Okambi, and Okambi had seven sons, of which Oromia was one of them. Okay, but however, whether that is why I now use either Oromia was according to the Yoruba version and uh, was Oduduwa's son or Oduduwa's grandson, but however, Oromia was the most trusted of Oduduwa's son or grandson. That's why I'm using all because <laughs> I don't want Yoruba to that say yes, you understand. So, because it's their own controversy, they are they are. They are Still not been able to tell their people whether Romia is Oduduwa's son or Oduduwa's grandson. Uh -huh, so we don't know. So but I might use grandson, I might use son. It, it depends on whoever wants to agree. Understand? So, but one thing is certain Romia was Oduduwa's favorite, whether as a son or grandson. Favorite. So he had to send his favorite. No father or grandfather send his favorite to a land that is not aware of or that he doesn't know who they were or who they are. You don't, you don't trust your best to, to foreigners, your enemy. Mm. to your enemy, to foreigners when you do not know them. You give your best to the people you know. So he gave them the best, but he, he gave them a test, the test of the lies. If they're able to give them five lies, if they five lies, if they're able to take care of those five lies in three years, then he can trust them because of the bad experience he had with his people when he was still in in his in his ancestral land. Now we are not calling it ancestral land. So after they, they have passed the test, he now gave them his favorite son or grandson or Romeo, which uh, favorite child. In Benin is usually called Omononya. And that's why Benin call him Omononya. That's a favorite child. Pampered child. Favorite child is usually called Omononya. All right. So Omononya or Oromia came to Benin to become the Oba. To become to continue with the lineage. The, soul, the lineage. You remember in our last class, I've already told you the, why the name changed from Oba. Sorry, yes, from Ogisu to Oba. Yeah. So whoever wants to now bring that to go back 
to the last one I had, where I detailedly talked about why it changed from Ogisho to Oba, where I said Ogisho and Oba means the same thing. All right. So we'll go back. So Oromian became Oba in Benin, but he did not stay too long because don't forget he was born by a Yoruba woman and bred up in Yoruba land. So by nature, there was already a cultural difference. If you take a Benin man in this modern settings, no Yoruba or Yoruba, you might not be able to cope. If you take a Yoruba man in this modern settings, someone that was born, let me give you an example. If you had kids, I don't know which of the country you are, let's assume you're in Germany. If you had kids that was born and raised in Germany, when they come to Nigeria or Edo, they will not be able to cope because of cultural differences. Not that yeah. they are not Benin. Not that they are not Benin. They are Benin, obviously. They are your children. You are a Benin man. All right, but because they were born in a different environment that is completely different in terms of cultural inclinations of how the ways and the life of the people, they are bound to be, you will not be able to cope. So when he came, Oromia came, However, he was a king, crowned at Siloko Road, where we call the Saman Palace, but he could not stay. Instead, he now said, okay, because of cultural difference, I know I'm a Benin man, but because of cultural difference, I was not born and raised in this land. Let me sigh another song, all right? Who will grow up here to know the ways of these people, to know the ways of our people, because I was not born here, I was born in a foreign land, and I've already been back with the foreign cultures and tradition. So he married the daughter of Ogiego called the Emide, and decided the son, and that son became known as Eweka the first, or by Eweka the first. Now, what is most important that people should acknowledge? With all the populations, don't forget, Ife, Ile Ife was just, it's not even up to a quarter in Benin at that time of history. Of all the populations of Igudumigodo people, however you want to call it, do you think that we would live, of all the vast, of all the numerous populations that we had in Benin at that time, do you think we will just leave all those populations and go to a far away foreign land. And I say, you come and be a king of Arabs. I don't it's <laughs> people, I don't know. There is logic in history. It's just like it's just like <laughs> it's just like um it's just like how do I put it? It's just like um on the democratic setting of having governance and state. It's just like Edo now, now going to Kanu, all right, to look for an outsider to become Edo state governor. <laughs> of all the population they have as an Edo indigenous, as an Edo sons and daughter, you now go to uh, probably Anabra to pick someone to become your own state governor. It just doesn't make sense, except if you know that that person, it's just like bringing, it's just like, Okay, the example I wanted to give, I don't want it to be controversial. <laughs> but however, it just wasn't logical that a do with all their vast majority, their vast lineage, they will now leave their people, their Edo people, and go to a foreign land and go and bring a foreigner to be their king. And that king came in as a child, Eweka, Eweka as a child. And since that time, for up to 1,000 years, the Benin one day, I've never rejected. I've never rejected a foreigner. They have been accepting these foreigners, according to the Algerian family. They have been rejecting these foreigners. <laughs> the only people who tends to say that these people of the fifty-two families that makes Benin, only one family against other fifty-one families are saying that the Oba, the Obas of Benin are Yoruba people. So, so how can one family be right over other 51 families? That because the incidents also happened briefly when the Benins loved us. 
when the Benins lost their sovereignty in 1897. Don't forget, Agu Obaseki was also made an administrator for about yeah. 15 years. Yeah. Because there was no Oba. Our Oba was the post to Calabar for 17 years. All right. He was an interim. He was an administrator of Dai for a period of about 15 years. Not 17 years. It was about 1899 that he became, he was made an administrator to officiate over the Benin people pending on when there was a restoration of the monarch. So now the Obasekis will now come out and say that they are supposed to be the Obas of Benin. It's the same event. The Ogyamian family, Avian, okay, I didn't tell you how the word Ogyamian came about. It was Irebo. He protested that Ogi or Senaga, that, that Ogi, you know, in other words, translated that kingship is it's a difficult sort of uh governmental rule that monarchical government is a very difficult form of rule okay law seven aga i mean do your tie translated in english that monarchical government is a very difficult kind of government that the edo people should convert from their monarchical government to republican because it was almost we were now almost operating at that 17 years of interregnum that uh, between the benin ife relationship that led to the benin ife relationship uh they we were almost operating a republican state so they wanted it to continue for a benin nation to be a republican nation and not a monarchical nation and that is why the the the, the likes of the aulia are standing a standing man at that time stood against that it has always been monarchical government that is the government that is only recognized in this land and we cannot be republicans all right so and that is what we meant that is why the ogiamian family hates the olia family to date because it was the olia so that is when Ogiami, <laughs> the first title ogiamian created when he was trying to form his own government was the olia title was the earlier title don't forget you know don't forget during i have said in our last class or last interview that there was a promulgated act by ogiso Riagba with the adjunction that oath was taken before a do that oath was it is only the blue blood that must sit on that throne you understand so yeah. if you are not recognized so forth by this a you are you cannot be the king of benin from the days of ogiso Riyagba, who is recognized as the 24th ogiso of benin if you are not recognized by these five elders you cannot be king in benin so how can these five elders would have gone and recognize a foreigner as against the Ogiamians or the Avian? So that shows that they knew that it is only this Oromian that carries the blue blood. I don't also forget the promulgated act. People should read the promulgated act. I think we should do a class, a very elaborate class. I think I will do something on that promulgated act so that people should be very aware. The promulgated act states, should in case the king does not have an heir apparent does not have a son. The nest of kin, all right, will be made the next king. So, assuming, according to some liars, that Ogiso Owodo had no son called the Kaladera, that means Ogiso Owodo's younger brother would have been easily be made the next Ogiso, according to the promulgated act of Benin that was instituted about 700 and about 789 AD by So, with all these prevailing facts, it was impossible for a foreigner to sit on the throne of the Edo people. To sit on the Edo people, to sit on the throne of the Edo people. So, let nobody deceive anybody under the guise of whatever family that, um, that uh, is even a chief 
Ogeme is the chief in the palace of the Obara Benin. Eh, let's not go there. Let me not deviate. But the point is, I have raised it. A Kaladaran became Oduduwa in Lefer. And the circumstances prevailed, made him Oduduwa in Lefer. And it was a son of Romian that, um, that the son or grandson that eventually came back, knowing fully well that he's ancestrally a Benin man. He has a blue blood. It's, a, it's from the royal, it's a direct descendant of the Ogishos and sat on the throne of his forefathers. So I think that is about it. That is about it. Okay. There is there is a, there is a question I want to ask. Uh, I read, I was reading, you know, history, and uh, I saw, I was told that uh, the king of uh, Ileife normally put on a veil. On a veil. And... Uh, and we were told that uh, Oduduwa, which was the first king, actually put on this veil. Yeah. So is there any, what was the symbol of that veil while Oduduwa put it on in his time? Well, I, I can't really tell. I think a brother of, um, one of our brothers was trying to unveil that misery of uh, that veil that Oduduwa put on that has been maintained by... Um, um the Ile fair people till date to the awnings of Ile fair people till date but um i think one very important message we must draw from is that the awnings of Ile fairs are not even Oduduwa's descendants that is the first thing that we must be aware of okay, the can, you, of if if you have time, can you take us through what is the relationship between the only and Oduduwa. Because today, the yeah. only of has become one of the greatest king in the Yoruba land, as of today. Yeah. So well, if you know, uh, yeah, that, 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 that acquires that, the power that they have. Yeah. That idea of king being a king, hmm, it's fallacious. It's a capital line. We know okay. how on it. Oh, near Deremi was made a king. Oh, knees in the time past were not kings. They were chief priests. They were not kings. It's only the Skions, the direct descendants of the Oduduwas, that are kings, that are princes, that are kings. Not Oni. Oni was a stay at home. Uh, um, 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 uh, how do you call it in English? Um, uh, one of these. Some refer to him, some Yoruba historians refer to him as uh, or some also refer to him as as a servant. Can you hear me? Yeah, can you hear clear, clear? Somebody okay. put us something else put it up for you there. I'm coming. Hello. Hello, I can hear you. Okay. Uh, the screen just got freezed up. Okay. Umobo. It's like he, he was he was more of like um he, he's more of like a servant. Uh Umobo. He was a stay at home at the time when Oduduwa had passed on. Every Oduduwa sons or grandsons, they all left Ilefe. He was not the only one left at home, only Orisha. I think only Orisha um, translated as someone who stays at home, someone a stay at home, someone who stays at home. So all the sons of Oduduwas, all the sons of Oduduwa left. It was the only one that left Ilefe. It was the only one that remained in Ilefe. And it was meant to propitiate the shrine, all right? of Oduduwa. So that does not give him an exclusive right of rulership. All right, it didn't give him an exclusive right of rulership, but rather it was an exclusive right of chief priest. He was a chief priest until recent times when he was converted to politics to a king. And it's like, is it audible? I can't... Yeah, yeah, we can hear you, hear you clearly. 
or what? It's freezed up. I don't know what's going on. But we can hear you clearly. Okay, you can hear me. Yeah. Okay. Um. So eventually, that was that was what happened. That was that was what happened. So only the the lineage of the Onis are not descendants of the Oduduwas. All right. So they are not kings per se. They are chief priests. So the whole idea, the viewers should be very conversant with that. That the function of the Oni is, is a chief propitiator of the Oduduwa shrines. And when Oba Abinim visited the Fair two years ago, the two years ago, 2017 or 2018, I was there. I was there. I saw everything that played out. I wrote a chronology. I wrote a book. Uh, I wrote I wrote an article, almost about six pages, of everything that played out. That's when I really knew that Oni is actually a chief priest. Every you know, Gebo, Abe, you know, Babe, or Hoho, Babe, Mila, you know, Beleya. So that in our hell, you can't see the Oba Abinim slaughtering cows and fowls and killing doves like the Oni does. All right. It is the chief priest in the kingdom that does that for the Oba Abinim. That is what is applicable to all kings in Africa. It is their chief priest that does that. But Oni himself was seen. I saw him like killing. So that shows that he, as a person, his original function is being a chief priest. All right. So I, I, it's it's just that the Yorubas have been so deceptive in their history that they have covered up the truth that only original function is not as a king. He doesn't have a throne. He's he's meant to propitiate the throne of Oduduwa. All right. So I think uh, that's a point I want to quickly raise. But for the one that the veil that covers the eyes. One of my brother did some something on the relationship, but I really don't know, so I cannot say what I do not know. Of, all right, so okay. I think we can go on to the other question, please. Okay. Now the the next question is this: uh, somebody somebody is saying there's a guy who is saying that uh, why is it that the heads of the Obas of Benin were actually buried at Ado before the modern days? If the Bini uh, kings are not actually okay. of the Yoruba descendants, okay, uh, because uh, a, lo a lot of you have not been following our programs, and that is why any person who have been following my programs will just laugh over this with facts. We have a lot of facts to counter this. First and foremost, no Oba Abinin. Okay. Only one Oba Abinin was buried in Ilefe. That was Oromia. Was buried in Ilefe. That was Oromia. But even a laughing of you do not tend to agree, but we believe that Oromia was buried in Ilefe. Aside that, no other Oba Abinin was buried in, in Ilefe. It is, there is a place the Yoruba called Oruobado. Most of these Facebook uh, talkative liars have not been to that site. I've been to that site severally. Don't forget, I'm a student and I am an Obafemi Awolubo University in Leife. It's my alma mater. I graduated from there. So when the Oba Abinim went to Ilefe two years ago, I was with him. We got to that Oro and Bado. Mm. For some of you who are very conversant with sizes, that Oro and Bado is about six feet by six feet in size. And it is very close to the third road. Very close to the third road. It's in the front of a tattered house. Maybe people should go and video it. Let them, let them. Google it. You see where that Oro and Bado is. Do you think if it was actually true that the heads of the Obas of Benin were actually buried there, do you think it would be it, do you think it would be in that public glare? It would be in the public space where even fowls, chickens, goats defecate on like what we saw the other time. First and foremost, do you know the first lie? How to know the first lie? The, the name of the place is called Oro and Bado. The word Ado came in from the reign of Obaiwai the first. 
That's when Ubini was changed to a Edo, which the Yoruba call Edo. So that means inherently, that means that place would have would have existed after Obaiwai. And Obaiwai is the 13th Oba of Benin. So what has happened to the other 12 Obas of Benin before Obaiwai? Because the word Edo, Edo entered into the lexicon of the Edo people, of Benin people, or Egodomingo people, from the reign of Obaiwai the first. So and that place is called Oruobado. So that means that phenomena is a modern day word. That's first. Secondly, they will never tell you this because maybe they don't read. And even if they have read, they will not tell you this. And their archaeological excavation was done on that place called Oruobado. And the name of the scientist, the English scientist that did the archaeological excavation on that Oruobado, his name is called Frank Willett. Frank Willett did an archaeological excavation. Go and look for the work of the archaeological excavation of Ileife by Frank Willett. Frank Willett, an archaeological excavation. This was not this was not an archaeological excavation that was done by <laughs> that was done that was done by Benin people or. Oh. <laughs> or Ijo people, or Isoko people. This was an archaeological excavation that was done by an Englishman that hates even the Edo people very well. <laughs> and that archaeological excavation proved that there was no single human bones, skeletons, skulls, nails, hairs that was found there, other than materials uh, have akin to hermetic hermits that, that is dated back to about... Um, Six to eight century. Again, six to eight century. These were the eras of the Ogi. So there was there was no oba. So produce a scientific material to prove that the obas of Benin were actually buried in Oron Bado. And I've just proved a material that is unquestionable, undeniable, that is undisputable. An archaeological excavation done by an Englishman called Frank Willett on that Oruan Bado that has this proof that no single human skeleton was found there. So the question now to the Ilefe people, <laughs> where what now happened to the bones and the head or the skulls or the nails or the hairs of the Obas of Benin disappeared, Abi? <laughs> so my brother, it's a bunch of lies. Now the question is where are the Obas of Benin's buried. Yeah. Simple. There is a parable. Are we still on? Yeah, we are on. Hello. Hello, hello, I can hear you. Hello. We are on. Hello, we are on, we are on. We are on. Babe. Hello, can you hear us? Now we I, have to go off. I have to go off and come in. Yeah, yeah, it's frozen now. Yeah, guys. Uh, thank you, guys, for today. I really, I'm really enjoying this class, and I believe uh, we're going to continue with this class, if possible, once in a week, so we can actually know history, hear history, and talk history. This is matter arising with humanist Stephen uh, uh, on this very show right now. We're going to continually doing this. Who is this guy, Daniel? He said, Why the insult? 
Why the insult? Why the insult? Why the insult? Why not just why not just say say your mind rather than insult the people? If you have a if you have a contrary view, why not just put your contrary view up? Why why are we why are we acting uh, like, as if uh, we are we are just uh, we I can't, I can't I can't even imagine how you people think, Seth. This is history. If you feel that the history is wrong, make your own presentation. Get across to me. I'll put it on. I'll put it on a live show. So you tell your history. Or I'll, I'll put you side by side with uh, with our brother. I'll put I'll put you side, I'll put you side, side by side with our brother. You know to tell your own history. No need, no need for insult. Please, guys. If you feel what he's saying is not true, then tell me. Oh, you want to I want to. I want to be live with uh, Izodua, and I'll put you side by side with him so that you can tell us what you want to do. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you, Wissi. Thank you, Abeg. Hey, bros. Now, are you hearing me now? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, where did I stop? Now, you, 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 just, uh, you just finished the, uh, the, 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 the where the Abbas are actually buried. Where are the Abbas of Benin buried? Okay. Yeah. Now, where are, the question is, where are the Obas of Benin buried? Very simple. There's a parable in Benin. I go above you. For those, in case, if you are not from Ogbe, ask. I want to give you a, a little bit of an assignment. <laughs> Any of them can verify it. <laughs> ask. Is there any burial ground in Ogbe? Is there, is there anybody buried in Ogbe? If you have a house in Ogbe, when you die, don't have one whether that person is buried in Ogbe. Oh, nobody. There's no bury, there's no bury ground. Nobody is buried in Ogbe soil. Other than the Oba of Benin. Our head don't I go above you. There is no there is no barrier. You cannot see any house in Ogbe. In the central, the real Ogbe, where we really call the Ogbe, that you will see anybody buried there. Now, having said that, although there are about four Obas that were not buried in Ogbe, four Obas that were not buried in Ogbe. The number one Oba that was not buried in Ogbe was Obaiwai the first. Before he died, let me not use the word before he died. <laughs> uh, before he saw John, please, uh, I needed to make that correction. Our Oba do not die. Before he saw John to the land of great beyond, he had made a request that he should be buried in his Matana grandmother's village called AC. AC. Not EC. EC is ISI to know there. There's another one called AC. Close is a community almost adjacent Siloko. E double S I AC. That is where Obaiwai the first was interned till date. His grave is still there. The second Oba that was not buried in Ogwe was a Heng Buddha Nobo. A Heng Buddha Nobo. On his way to Lagos, his uh, chip, Okonolai, capsized. All right? So he was not found. Although some, uh, when I used to tell a Heng Buddha Nobo story, uh, some, some historians believe that... Uh, he ascended to heaven, that he never saw that. However, it is, but he ascended to heaven, but he was not buried. He never returned from that journey. His journey to to a co, the, the 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 land that was established by his father Barobwa, that was founded by his father Barobwa. That's the second Oba that was not buried in Ogbe. The third Oba was Oba Ahenkpai. It was he is believed to be the greediest of all the Obas. So the chiefs deceived him to his Matana village at uh, 
uh, at uh, Igosa. Igosa. Where Igosa is where Oriomon, after my village, Igbekwe, Sokomba Igosa, was deceived to Igosa, where he eventually died and was buried. Or by him, by him. The fourth Oba was Oba of Oramen, or by, so obviously, it was deposed to Calabar, and he, he died in Calabar, was buried. But, um, however, his remains, uh, some years later, by Redi Awa brought his remains back to Benin for him to be interned with his ancestors at the Ogbe soil. Anyway, that one is left. Uh, that was not supposed to be on the public domain, though. Um, so, having said that, these are the four Obas that is believed not to have been buried in Ogbe soil. Every other Oba completely, aside the one that I said, Oromia, which was the first Oba, was actually buried in Ilefe. Every other Oba completely has been buried in Benin. The place I have said, called Oru Oba Ado, there was an archaeological excavation that was carried out by Frank Willett, a British archaeologist, on that purported site. In short, if you buy, they all write to to deceive the people. They have always been liars all throughout their existence. This is not a bad history. Let them prove scientifically. We, we the Edo people, we have reference, scientific proof that no, no single human being was buried at that site. They should also bring a counterproof scientifically that states that someone was buried there so that we can go for DNA sampling and test. <laughs> this one is beyond <laughs> Matayata. So anyway, those are all completely bad at us. The lies from the pit of hell that the Yoruba is using uh, deceiving the populace and uh, their co-followers. Okay. The last <laughs> question. <laughs> so, I haven't said that. Is there any other question? Is there any other lie that we show us? Let me quickly answer to that. Uh, the, the last question for the day. Is there any for, other uh, question? Let me quickly run through. Yeah, somebody somebody's talking about, he said, when uh, Prince Ewaka was coming in, okay, I, I wanted to use that for, for our next class, that is not talking about the Ewaka to the other the other bars. But somebody just threw that up now, and I need to quickly ask you. He said there was a treaty known as the Ekiopara Treaty. So how did that one come, come into play? The network is bad. Yeah, it's bad now, yeah. Hello. So the network is bad. I can't hear you. Yeah, can you hear me now? Network, hey, man. Okay, but, I can hear you now. It's better now. Okay. In where, in where the Ecuador Treaty? Can you just throw light on that? How did the Ecuador Treaty came about? Network. Oh, this so network. Hello, can you, hear, can you hear me now? Network is bad again. Nigeria, my country. Can you just go out and come back in, please? Okay. Guys, you see, this is interesting. I'm just trying to throw the questions you guys are putting up. That's why I said no insult, no no word. If you feel uh, uh, you, don't, you don't believe what he's saying, throw, put up your question there. I'll put it across to him, and uh, he will give uh, details of it. So this is how it works. Okay, that's what somebody asked the question now. Uh, Os Osaze Iyoa, Osawaru. That's why I want to I want to throw the question before him so that he can be able to give us a clear understanding of that very particular uh uh Yeah, hello. Can you, can you hear me now? My my teacher. 
Hello. Yeah. Uh huh. Here we are. Equipment treaty. Can you just talk to that? Yeah, can hear you. Let's talk about the equipment treaty. How did it come? How did the equipment treaty come about? Between the Ogiamens and the and the Obaiweka. Well, um. Maybe we we'll just do that. Then we will be close for today until the next class. No, no, no. There was no equipment. Okay. Mm. Well, first and foremost, the equipment treaty did not um, did not happen in the time of a bioworker. It happened in the time of a bioweather. Okay. And please, um, I would like to be very detailed about the Akilbara Treaty. I've, I have, we have, through one of our press conference, we have detailedly as stated that the Akilbara Treaty never existed, was a rule and truth, because um, I'm going to give an historical background of the Akilbara Treaty so that people don't think, I don't, I don't run from any of these questions, but I want it to be very detailed. But in... I'm going to mention a quick power. There were about eight of the treaties, all right, one by one or by two, according to the Ogiamian people, that there were eight. Understand? So, and um, and that uh, part of the quick power treaty number one is that um, they give the land that they own the land, and they give the land have been in. That's treaty number one. Treaty number two is. Um, what's treaty number two? Treaty number two is they will never intermarry. Okay? Treaty number three is that they will never bow before the Oba of Benin. Then treaty number four is that a patch roof, a roof, Naya Kawa and all that, how it will look like and all that. So, but every other treaties were commensurate. Now, I'll talk about it in our next class detail. I just want to, so that I, I want to put some sugar in our lips, in our tongue, so that we can expect uh, how Mavis will come, will come out publicly. I'll tell them to go to the palace of the Oba Abini and tell them that Izodu has said the Kuba Treaty never really existed. It was observed, and I will tell you why it has been observed, not that it existed. First, they said the treaty is whoever breaks this eight treaty, I think there are seven to eight in numbers, this stated treaty, whoever breaks it is subject to death. Do, do you understand? Yeah. So whoever breaks, that's the old and the Ogiami of that era too. So whoever breaks this treaty is subject to death. Now, let me tell you how many, I can tell you how many times that treaty has been broken and nobody has died. That means <laughs> the treaty never actually existed. The Ogiami of Obadolo, hmm? yeah. the Ogiami of Obadolo, Obadolo is the father of Obavora Menogbasi. The Ogiami of Obadolo era hmm? married Obadolo's second daughter. Hmm? Yeah. Are you there? Yeah, yeah, I'm listening, sir. Clearly. <laughs> okay. The treaty they said that they had with the monarch, with the palace, is that whoever breaks that treaty, eh, <laughs> will die. So if the Oba Bini breaks the treaty, that means Oba Bini will die. If they break that treaty, that means they will die. All right. About Oba Adolos' daughter was married to Chief Ogiame of that era. These, um, these, uh, I would have wanted to insult him, but I cannot, I cannot, I don't want to lay, I don't want to be as foolish and stupid like they are, like some of them, not all the Ogiame family now, some of them are. This uh, so-called Professor Tony Ogiame publicly came out to say it that they are huge and tall. 
in their family from their lineage because they married from the royal family, the Obas family. He publicly said it in Ogiamen's trumpet. In our subsequent class, in our next class, I will bring the volume, the magazine, the dates, the day, the volume number, the page, the paragraph, where Professor Tony Ogiame, who is quoted to be the first black man to have in America, hmm, said and, I, and accepted that they married from the, the, the royal family. I have a whole lot of Ogiame followers and friends that have gone to the palace in recent times to prostrate and bow to the Obal Benin. They are still alive. So, in other words, in other words, I'm going to speak on the Okyokbara Treaty. How it came, and I'm going to use the next class to also completely annihilate everything that has to do with the Okyokbara Treaty and prove to the people that that Okyokbara Treaty is a ruse. And I will tell you why the Obas of Benin, some of the Obas of Benin, out of the 39, from Obaya Wedo, from Obaya Wedo to, from Obaya Wedo, from Obaya Wedo, Obaya Wedo is a Obaya Romian, Obaya Weka, Obaya Ukwankwane, Obaya Hemiye, Obaya Wedo. Obaya Wedo is the fifth Obaya Benin. From Obaya Wedo to Obaya Ewai the second, there are 35 in numbers. Of these 35 Obas of Benin, Less than 12 of them has observed the Ekeobara Treaty. So that means the Ekeobara Treaty is not even important. But anyway, but anyway, in the next class, I will I'll talk more of that. Uh, okay. I don't talk for too long. No, you, you've done well. You've done well, my brother. Thank you very much, mm. uh, historian. Uh, Izoduwa Amuwe Imaswen for your time today on the uh, history class of the Benin Kingdom. I want to say a big thank you for taking our time to come and teach us history today. Because the reason why I brought up this very particular uh, uh, forum is for us to have a, a class whereby we can be able to learn history as the Benin people. Because people are, are there are a lot of things that are coming up that we can be able to learn when we start. Uh, uh, following historians like you, who actually knows, you know, the history of Benin Kingdom in uh, in a great uh, in depth. We say a very big thank you for tonight, and we hope to see you soonest again as we take another class. Uh, 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 Isaac, Elisha, I'm going to ask that question next 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 time, please. We are done for today. Thank you very much. We appreciate you. See you again next Wednesday. Well, have a blessed night. God bless you, sir. Well, what's it? All right. Good night. Okay. So, thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. It, it has been a very wonderful class today. And this is from your brother, Manta Arising with you, Manny Steven, on the show. I want to thank uh, 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 the Niger Watch, you know, for this very particular, you know, uh, opportunity that he gave to us. To use this platform to share the Benin history. Thank you very much, guys. See you tomorrow. Tomorrow, I'm going to have another two very powerful brokers tomorrow. One is going to be at five o'clock, another one is going to be at seven o'clock tomorrow. Don't miss any of the any of the interviews or brokers, as I may call it. It's going to be very intriguing, very explosive, and very wonderful. This is your presenter. Humanist Steven on Mata Arisings with Humanist Steven. Thank you guys. See you tomorrow. Have a blessed night. Bye.